Winter has well and truly arrived here in Edinburgh. The temperatures have dropped to single digits, and the trees have lost their leaves. I'm learning to embrace and love every season. When you begin to do so, you see the beauty offered to you in every single thing. Once I would mourn the leafless trees with their harsh branches. Now I see it as an opportunity to admire their incredible architecture and structure. It's these small changes in perspective which have helped me enjoy my life more. They have a bigger impact than you can imagine. At home, I'm going to make a garland for my fireplace. For those of you who enjoy ASMR, I invite you to relax as I get to work. You will see that with a little bit of care and attention, something eventually comes together and looks quite beautiful.
I just wanted to say thank you for all of your incredibly kind support with regards to my last video where I talked about Patreon. Uh, I was very nervous about making that video. It was something that I've been thinking about for a long time and the response was overwhelming. Lots of love, lots of people supporting and even those of you who can't support me for whatever reason, you made me feel loved and like I was doing something that was okay. So really I just want to say thank you so much for supporting me with everything. Uh, I should have expected that from all of you anyway because that's always what you've done for me is just be there and support. I'm looking forward to sharing more and more with you as we progress. As you probably know one of the things that I enjoy sharing the most is a good book and I've recently got one that I think you will really like. So it is called Dida Blair, Food, Flowers and Fantasy. Now for those of you who don't know who Dida Blair is, she is an American socialite and philanthropist and a real style icon. Um, she is someone who I've kind of heard about in the past, but not really, I wasn't really aware of who she was. I just knew that she had incredible style and she's a very private person. She's not on any social media, but she's kind of given a few interviews in the past where you got a glimpse inside her home, which is an incredible apartment in New York. And so I got to glimpse a bit of that style and taste and I was a little bit captivated. So when this book was released, I was very excited and I got it immediately. And I've got to say that I seem to be saying this with every new book that I get, but this is the most beautiful book I've ever seen. So even though I do not know much about this person, what I have learned in the past few days since reading this book and by reading more about her online is that She's not one of these socialites who does philanthropy just so that it sits well with her image. She is very, very engrossed in philanthropy um, and in particular neuroscience and she's very, very intelligent and clued up on the subject. And I think she's been working on this for most of her life and I think it's something that she has really made a difference with. So that is a nice thing. I think sometimes, as I just said, that a lot of people who are wealthy or famous decide to take the philanthropic route to kind of boost their image and uh, it's a good PR move, which, you know, isn't bad. If you are making a difference in any way, that always helps. But when you really are focused on the subject, then I think for me that is very special. So yes, this is all about Dida's lifestyle and in particular food and recipes uh, for fantasy dinner parties. So it takes you through different locations around the world. For example, let's have a look. So here we have picnic on a visit to Egyptian treasures. And then it just goes through the vision for this picnic. Uh, it's obviously a fantasy lunch. And then it goes through the inspirations. So you get to see some beautiful pictures kind of like a scrapbook. And then it comes up with the menu for the picnic with a beautiful photograph. The menu, so I'll read this one. Picnic on a visit to Egyptian treasures. First course, deed is cold beet soup. Main course, Moroccan chicken and couscous. And for dessert, blackberry, blueberry and blackberry tart. Next we have luncheon at Chateau du Jonchet, which was famously the home of Givenchy. So then it shows you inside his home, which I always love looking at. I think um, Givenchy had the most incredible, beautiful elegance. And then again, at the very end, there is the menu. So first course is Dida's iced cauliflower soup. And then the main course is Groyer roulade. And for dessert, poached fresh apple with walnuts and honey. And you get some beautiful pictures of the lunch. Just look at this picture of Dida's townhouse in New York. Gorgeous. And then at the back of the book, all of the recipes are there so that you can make them for yourselves. So this is a real visual feast. Uh, it's definitely one that I would recommend. 
and I will put this in the link in the description so that you can check it out for yourselves. But whether you're going to be gifting for Christmas, the holidays, or just for yourself, I would highly recommend this one. So speaking of books, one of the things that we're doing here at Nicholas Fairford with all of the orders that we receive um, is we're sending out a cute little bookmark as a Christmas gift to everybody who orders a product. So that comes with your little product inside of the package. It's got the NF logo on the front and then on the back it says, whatever you're reading, I hope it's bringing you joy, Nicholas. So I just thought when I was thinking about what I could do to give people a little, little gift for Christmas, I always think about how I like to share books with you all and how much you enjoy them. So I thought that I always need a, book, a bookmark. I'm often using like old receipts or things like that. So I thought a little bookmark would be very useful. And then you also get this cute little Christmas card, which comes in this little card here uh, with a wreath on the front. And then it just has a little message on the back from me. So that is what you get as a little Christmas present from me to say thank you for your order. So I thought that I would share that with you now because I think it's quite cute. So now I thought I would give you a little look through this book. The cover is gorgeous. It's a picture of Dida Blair's living room. And I really like that they've used this pattern on here. It's very chic and elegant. And then when you open the book, the end papers have this beautiful pattern on that could be a gorgeous wallpaper. In fact, I would like to find out what it is because I really like it. Here is a picture of Dida Blair. This was taken in her apartment on the East River in Manhattan and it was by Julia Hetta for T Magazine, New York Times. She's wearing a Ralph Rucci gown. Very striking. What I also like about this book is that the paper is matte and not shiny. And I think when you have shiny pages, although they look luxurious, it can be hard to look at the photographs depending on what light you're in. It can reflect quite badly and you can't see, um, and especially when you're trying to film like this. So you'll see that we're not having any problems with that. It's very clear, there's no reflection. And just look at this absolutely stunning picture. This is the, the Blair's living room in Washington, D.C., 2001. Gorgeous tableau, French table with a stool, beautiful style, classic and elegant. So the first part of the book is an introduction about Dida Blair, about her life. What I like about her style is that this picture, for example, was taken in 1999, but it looks timeless. This could be a picture from today. And this, this is the living room again. I think this is the most pared back, elegant, chic style I've ever seen. There's absolutely nothing on the walls, no pictures. It is plain, but it looks so beautiful and so restrained. This is a style that has taken years to hone and something that not everybody could uh, pick up quite easily. I think it's pure, gorgeous perfection. So part one is thoughts and reflections on entertaining. So that is Dita Blair with her husband in 1987. Again, timeless. And again, another picture of the living room in New York. I think this is just so stunning. So stunning. And a picture of a dining room designed by Billy Baldwin in 1972. And it is their dining room in Washington. Look at this elegant tablescape of blue and white gingham check tablecloth with napkins and then we've got the blue and white porcelain very simple beautiful part two thoughts and reflections on inspiration so this just talks about Dida's travels around the world how she's been inspired 
the people who inspired her to live this life of excellent taste. And I think it's always nice to acknowledge that in your life. Yeah, so I feel like this book is really a scrapbook as well, of inspiration. You can see some of Dida's favourite images that have inspired her, artworks, things that she's seen around the world. This picture is very chic. It is Dida tending to her boxwood garden, which had four species of rare mini boxwood just outside the dining room of her house in Washington. This was by Eric Bowman for House Beautiful 2001. Look at this beautiful picture of a gorgeous desk in front of a window with these incredible curtains. The flower in the pot on the desk is actually a porcelain flower by artist Claire Potter. Part two, fantasy menus. So this is where it talks about lunches and dinners and picnics in various locations. The inspiration behind them. Here we have the first fantasy lunch, a table set for a fantasy meal inspired by Dida's memories of the colors of Sweden and the light and airy atmosphere of Haga Pavilion. Gorgeous. Beautiful. The table set for the fantasy lunch. Now this is a page that I saved to show you because it is so beautiful. It is a table set for lunch in, I think, the living room. And I just loved the quiet elegance of this room. Bookshelves, all lined beautifully with art and pieces of china and objects. So beautiful. Beautiful Room by Givenchy. Excellent, beautiful taste. Bedroom at Le Jonche by Givenchy. And then look at the table, set so exquisitely heavenly. And then at the end we get to the recipes. So they're all here in detail, some of them have pictures. But they're all here for you to try out. I am going to be trying out some of these recipes. I also love that they have these illustrations. Um, I'm going to be trying out some of these recipes soon. They are quite fancy, but it's Christmas coming up, so it's the perfect time of year to do just that. So, as you can see, I'm in the dining room, and last week I set the table. And actually, what I was reading in the comments is that people thought it was beautiful, but not really very festive. And yes, that was. Uh, that wasn't something that I hadn't thought about myself. It definitely needed a little bit of something festive, and that was the plan to do that this week. So I have added in a few bits from my neighbour's garden. So we've got some holly and some berries, which I've just placed on the table and then woven through the candelabra here. And then I've just added in some of the Balsam Hill baubles, just scattered them on the table. And I think this is a very understated, elegant table setting. It's definitely sticking to the woodland theme. It's probably the most masculine table that I've ever created and I think that is my the way my style is evolving now. I do love lots of pretty things and flowers but the darkness and masculine touches here like the the, the hard earthy materials and the basket weave, the green, the brown, I think it looks so elegant and uh, I'm really excited and pleased with this and I can't wait to have a little Christmas dinner party and uh, enjoy it with everyone. So I hope that you like it. I think it is really beautiful and um, hopefully it's going to provide a little bit of 
Christmas inspiration for you. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and found it fun and entertaining. I'd also like to thank all of my new supporters on Patreon. Your belief in me means the world. If you would like to learn more about my Patreon account, I will leave the link in the description below. Thank you.